artistic friends and visitors and welcome to a very special lesson in Monet Cafe. Today I'm going to be doing a pet portrait that is for a dear person who manages and moderates our Facebook group. If you haven't joined the group you should. It's full of great people and Katrina is such a great moderator and unfortunately her sweet little karma passed away recently and I just wanted to do something special for her and she has already seen this so now I can share the video and I wanted to share this because I don't just do landscapes on this channel. I happen to love pet portraits and wildlife, so let's get started on this lesson. It's going to be fun. Now, here are my supplies. I'm using Sennelier Le Carte Pastel Card. I love the surface. It's very gritty. I recently bought this smaller pad, and uh, I like it. I, I'm not quite sure of the measurements, but I, it's around 11 by 14. They have one that's bigger. Um, but I like this size. Uh, notice that they have, I can't remember how many are in it, but they've got samples of various colors. And uh, sometimes the color just sets the mood. Oh, I love this kind of bluish green color that they have here. So uh, again, I, I make note when I use this paper, don't add water to this paper. It is not water friendly. Now I wanna show you a little trick. When doing pet portraits or people portraits, you wanna get things precise. So I try to get my measurements correct on my photo and my working surface, and I'm gonna show you what I do. What I'm doing here on the iPad is I'm clicking the power button, I'm trying to find it, and the little round button, um, the select button at the same time. What that does is it gives you what's called a screenshot. It just sent the screenshot to my photos. Now I'm going to um, an app. It's just called Photo Editor on iPad. It's free and I like it for its cropping feature. Uh, I picked the photo and the reason I did a screenshot is I wanted to kind of crop it but uh, I picked the photo and it allows me to pick all these different standard sizes I want to do around an 8 by 10 size so that's what I picked and see I can even move the crop around to get it just how I want it I can actually kind of I think I can increase the size of the the picture too if I wanted but I liked that I'm done with that that's what I want and uh, that's the basic composition that I want and now I'm simply going to go back to my photos. That's where the app saves it. Oh, that's another reference photo. And uh, it's going to be the last photo that it saved in the cropped 8x10 crop. So now I have a nice 8x10 format. What I need to do now is to get an 8x10 format on my Sennelier Le Carte pastel card. I have a neat little trick that I use. If you happen to have any mats, that are 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 or 5 by 7, whatever size you're using, um, just take a mat. This happens to be an 8 by 10 mat. It's actually, a the opening's a little bit smaller than 8 by 10, but it's proportionate to the crop I just did with the photograph. So now all I'm doing is basically, that's just a piece of charcoal, willow charcoal. I'm just uh, marking out on my pastel card um, the 8 by 10 size. Now I'm going to share a lot in this video. Um, at some point I'm going to do a little uh, uh, music and because oh yeah you got to have your Monet Cafe coffee cup and coffee to get started um, but uh, I'm going to be sharing a lot at the beginning of this video even though I play music later in it about technique now I just use a simple pencil you can use whatever um, and I'm just getting in a light sketch here and what I want to emphasize in this video is how important it is with portraiture work, be it animal or people portraits, to get your drawing, your sketch, your proportions uh, correct. Because it's going to not look like that person or animal uh, if you don't get these things right at the beginning. It's like it's just like having good soil to plant in. You've got to get the uh, the basic sketch and image. In right now here's what's the, the reason for portraiture I'm stressing it is I'm not just painting a dog I'm painting someone's dog just like if you're painting a person I'm not just I, I like the sketchy app I like to paint people I don't know but I'm not it's not a commissioned work so it can just look like sort of like the person not just like the person but if you're doing a portrait animals even have individuality and personality and it's not just this breed of dog i'm painting it's this person's dog so i hate to belabor that point but it is very important uh, and it's so neat the more you start looking and studying the more you start realizing wow dogs really do have an individual look to them 
you know so it's it's uh, really really great to get your sketch in right now what I want to share here is uh, how I'm working is the reason I like to get my proportions right with the 8 by 10 on the crop and the 8 by 10 on my surface even though my reference photo I've just put up here is not correct proportions to fit what I do a lot is I use what's called negative drawing or painting and I'm looking at in getting this sketch right I'm looking as much at the negative shapes as I am the positive shapes. I'll mention that a little bit more uh, as this goes on. And I'm also working um, just kind of uh, quickly, but sketchy. I don't want to get too tied down in one spot too long because I'm, I'm really trying to work on the whole. You know, I don't want to start doing the toenails exactly or anything like that. This is just a basic sketch to get ready for the painting. Now, let me mention a little bit. Let's see if it's about to that point here. Um, like right in that area that I'm pointing at right there, I'm seeing that negative shape, meaning the shape of the floor. If you look at the reference image where his ear is, our left, his right ear, our left, there's a negative space in there. As much as the black dog, there's a shape. If you can see that shape and you've got your crop image of your photograph and your reference I mean, and your painting surface, the same proportions, you can accurately get your sketch in uh, by using those negative shapes. And it really helps me as an artist just to kind of look at the positive and the negative. And um, so anyway, it, I, I'm going to really probably blow this out of proportion in this video, but we have to have to get these things right. Now you're going to see as we go on, I'm going to uh, just play some music here and finish the sketch. You're going to see how uh, even this I'm trying to get accurate I know I'm gonna have some things off and I'm gonna go back and fine to that tune that so you'll get to see me do that in just a minute all right enjoy this process thought I'd quickly mention here that the white that you see there it was just a pastel pencil sometimes I make little color notes this is more value notes as to see where that shiny part was on his face kind of helped me in measuring now I'm gonna share a little trick with you here that I do in Photoshop this is the initial sketch that I finished and I knew it was going to need some tweaking I stepped back away from it and I could see pretty quickly a few things that were off I thought I had the the shape and the size of the head pretty good but I thought the mouth may have been a little high and off and uh, and I felt the legs were too short so what I did I'm gonna share this um, for anybody who 
is computer savvy with Photoshop. I know not everybody has that um, resource available. There are other ways that you can do this, but tweaking your photograph, I mean your sketch, prior to the painting process is really important. So whatever method you use, I mean, I could have just done this by hand, but you know, why not use some of these tools if you can? <laughs> so this is to help anyone who has that, but again, make sure you get your sketch accurate. It's very important with a portrait of a person or an animal. Okay, so let's get into this and I'll let you know how I did it. Basically, Photoshop works. You may be interested in this, even if you don't know Photoshop, because it's kind of cool. The way Photoshop works is you put things in layers. So I already have my initial sketch layer here and behind it I have my photograph that I worked from, my reference photograph. And so what you can do in Photoshop is uh, it's really like layering a cake. This is the bottom layer that you're seeing behind it. You can't see it because this one's on top of it and this is the top layer. So what I did is I already um, pre-did this. I lined them up uh, accurately where they're you know lined up on top of each other in the right place and what I'm going to do this little thing over here to the right is called the opacity it's the ability to make the image that you're on it's this one highlighted the dog sketch its ability to make it more translucent less opaque and more translucent so take a look at how again I told you I already lined it up at how um, you're starting to see through the sketch to the dog photograph now I'm gonna leave it right about there because that's pretty good to see both and like I thought, I, I kind of got most things of the head right, but I was right. The mouth was off. The mouth should be more down here, a little more. Uh, the nose size is pretty good, um, but the mouth needs to come down here more. Okay, you see that? And the chin is lower than I had it. I also noticed I thought the, the reason I thought the legs were too short is I could tell the chest wasn't long enough. Um, but let me work top to bottom. Again, I kind of got the eyes right, which is to me, the eyes are like, totally the personality of the animal or the person that you're drawing. So you want to make sure you get those eyes right. So I was pretty good. I took a little bit more time on that. Um, but then I noticed the ears were good. Basic shape of the body is good. But as I came down again, I noticed this needed to be lower, which in turn made the tag need to be lower. Now this is where, you know, again, I, I really got this pretty good. I was happy to see. But the chest is lower down. You see how far that goes down here where that lighter part of his fur is and uh, of course then the feet are lower here. I got the general positioning of them but they're lower down here which in turn of course the shadow is going to be lower with the feet so gotta get that corrected. Um, I was pretty happy to see that I pretty much got that if you want to call it a knee on a dog I don't know if that's the back if that's the correct terminology for a dog's leg, <laughs> but it looks like a knee to me. And uh, and I got that foot pretty close. So, um, so a lot was going right, but you definitely want to get these things fixed. So all I did is I, I just printed this out. I'm going to take it back over to my sketch and correct these things. So there's a little tip for anybody who might have Photoshop um, or any other way you can come up to tweak your sketch to get it right. All right, so now it's time to come... Or, um, repair this <laughs> or improve this sketch and get started.
Now that I have things basically in, I'm going to start working on the eyes. I'm using Giaconda pastel, soft pastel pencils. This is a set of 48 that I have had for years because I don't use them very much. So um, little teeny places like eyes and things like this are sometimes it's, it's handy to have the soft pastels because it's kind of uh, tricky. And uh, I make sure I have them very sharp. We've had a lot of people in our Facebook group ask about the best pastel sharpeners. And I have one that, or, uh, pastel pencil sharpeners, I have one that works pretty good. It's a metal one that I have. I don't recall the name brand, but I have something else that I do. I actually use an X-Acto blade. I'm gonna be showing that in a minute of how I, I sharpen them. Now, just because I'm using the pastel pencils here um, doesn't mean I won't go back and add soft pastel in, some, some of my really softies at the end to get that color in. Uh, soft pastel pencils are kind of hard and um, it, it's good for um, getting details in like this and it's also good because you can still layer soft pastels on the top of them. Also, this Sennelier pastel paper card is um, very gritty so it allows for quite a bit of layering. So this is kind of just to make sure I get those eyes right and if you keep watching this video you'll see um, I realized this after I got them in that the eyes were too big. Now they may be okay for you know just a dog in general uh, but this dog happened to have eyes, Karma happened to have eyes kind of like my son's dog named Diesel. They're they're not real big but they're they look wise and they look uh, human-like intelligent but they're they're smaller so uh, later you'll see how I correct the size of the eyes and again this pastel card uh, Sennelier Le Carte is uh, very good for being able to correct things because I didn't have any problem in putting some soft pastels on top of them my technique I mentioned for sharpening my pencils. I don't always use this method, but if one is really soft like this kind of reddish pink one was, my metal sharpener wasn't working all that great. So I just have an X-Acto blade. You want to have a sharp blade and uh, you want to be careful, <laughs> but you're really just working in kind of thin layers. You're just shearing off uh, bits of the wood until you get a, um, a kind of a sharper point. And then I use a piece of um, actually, this is piece of the Sennelier Le Carte card because it's kind of sandy. It works like sandpaper and I continue to sharpen the pencil from the pastel card. So it works quite well. And uh, having these sharp points is really going to help me getting the details of the eyes in. to show here how I'm using um, my these are great American pastels that I have it's a new set and I haven't even taken the wrappers off of many of them but I often like to go ahead and get in my mood for the background I decided actually you'll notice to keep that little uh, almost like a window the square that I did originally the 8 by 10 so the final <coughs> excuse me the final painting is not going to be an 8 by 10 it's gonna be a little bit bigger than an 8 by 10 but I kind of like the feet kind of sticking out of that little cropped area like that so I thought I would play around with that I can always at the end if I didn't like that just 
go extend the barrier of that square that I had done. But I like to get in my values early because the value will of the surrounding area of the dog will determine the value of what I paint um, <clears throat> on the dog. So values very dependent on each other and so is color. Uh, if you've ever noticed, you've probably noticed this, if you're ever picking out color like uh, at Home Depot or whatever to paint your walls, if you ever notice how you pick out a particular swatch or color you get at home, it looks totally different. But it's because the color is dependent on the light and the colors in your house, which may be different from the light and the colors that it's next to when you're standing in Home Depot. So the same thing works for a painting. A blue will look more blue next to certain colors than it will others. So again, that's the reason that I like to go ahead and get my values in. It kind of sets the mood for the painting. I don't know what I was pointing at there, <laughs> but um, it, it really just helps kind of get things going and, and kind of get my direction settled. So I'll just let the painting process continue here and I'll admit looking back at this doing the voiceover <laughs> he does look a little off right here but again I'm working big shapes and fine tuning things as I go so uh, fortunately he starts to take shape soon.
so here's the big finish and fortunately Katrina loved it thought it really resembled her sweet karma and I'm going to be getting it out in the mail to her very soon I love doing uh, memorial pet portraits uh, because I know how much being an animal lover myself how much these sweet babies mean to us so rest in peace sweet karma and I hope you guys enjoyed another lesson in Monet Cafe please subscribe come back soon and join our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook happy painting